Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1,504. Best way to have a successful career is just work hard and be nice. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah. I'm revved up and so excited to share with you today a very special guest calling in from beautiful Southern California. I wish I was there today. Michael Rapetti. Michael Rapetti is co-founder of The Motoring Club, a membership site for automotive enthusiasts. It's a destination where they are building a community through their network of clubhouses, starting with Los Angeles and their online membership platform. The Motoring Club is a place where like-minded people work together to source the finest products, services, experiences, and of course a few deals. Think of it as a combination of vehicle storage, a social gathering place, a networking space with exclusive benefits. Michael started his career path in New York City in the commercial real estate business and then moved into tech, working for large companies to small startups before starting the Motoring Club. We'll be back in a minute to talk to Michael, but first a word from our sponsors that make Cars Yeah! possible. We'll be right back. Hey, Cars Yeah! I'm a huge fan of Covercraft. I've protected my vehicles with their products for decades. Want to keep your vehicle's interior looking new? It's easy with Covercraft seat covers. They'll protect your seats from the daily abuse of pets, children, weekend adventures, and even those everyday spills. It's a fast, easy, and inexpensive way to keep your vehicle looking new. All Covercraft seat covers are easy on, easy off design that are machine washable. You can choose from many fabric options, colors and accessories, all designed and carefully sewn for your special vehicles. Their seat gloves are semi-custom fit for cars and trucks, and their seat savers, a favorite of mine, are custom tailored to fit your seats like a glove. Work truck seat covers are tough, durable, denim weight fabric. It's like putting a pair of rugged jeans on your truck's seats. Want to stay warm? Covercraft also offers seat heaters. Covercraft is the right choice. Learn more today at Covercraft.com and tell them Mark at Cars Yeah sent you. That's Covercraft.com. Are you a Cars Yeah subscriber? If you're not, go to CarsYeah.com, click on the free book button, and I'll send you my free filler up book. It's a very cool book I created of fuel filler fun, some very cool imagery, and great quotes from past guests here on Cars Yeah. Plus, you'll get my weekly email follow-up and my weekly blog. Just go to CarsYeah.com, click on the free book button, and I'll send it to you right away. Thanks for subscribing. Hey, Michael, welcome to Cars Yeah. Are you buckled up and ready for a fun ride? Sure am, ready to go. All right. Michael, before we get rolling here, just kind of maybe give us a little history about yourself and uh, what led you up to starting the Motoring Club. Uh, yeah, well, first off, thanks for having me on. Uh, You're welcome. I've been to you for a while, so uh, very Thank you. honored to be a, a guest today. Basically, you know, I guess my story, as you mentioned, most of my career was in uh, technology. I was more on the kind of sales and business development side of things and have just always been kind of a casual car enthusiast. I'd say I've always been one of the those people that had a lot of different interests. So a lot of different sports. Skiing was a big part of my life. And cars kind of always a background interest. And as I got older, started kind of getting more and more into it. Um, and so, you know, I kind of came to a bit of a crossroads in my career. You can call it kind of a, a burnout if you will, and decided to kind of pursue one of the passions in my life, kind of a toss up of, you know, should I do something in the outdoor industry or follow something in the in the car industry? So was uh, lucky enough to kind of figure out, uh, you know, a basic idea of, of what I wanted to do with developing the idea for Motoring Club. And took a plunge and and uh, and and started it. So that's uh, and here you are. Yeah, that's very that. cool. Yeah, here I am. Yeah, well, you know that's what Cars Yeah is all about. And as a regular listener, you know that a lot of people who have figured out a way to wrap their passion into their careers and lives, uh, 
It's a great part of what Cars yeah is all about, is sharing the inspiration of how you got to where you are. Tell our listeners maybe one little thing that most people don't know about you. Say uh, that I used to be a, a DJ. Oh, really? Yeah, that was oh, cool. Uh, <laughs> It would kind of moonlight as a DJ at night uh, on weekends uh, when I was living in San Francisco, got pretty into the music scene. So it was kind of a fun thing to do. I DJ, you know, friends parties, my company parties, and then was lucky enough to DJ at some some legitimate big clubs in San Francisco. So it's something that I still have fun with and we'll uh, do some guest appearances at friends weddings and, and whenever I can. Very cool. That's great. Well, thanks for sharing that. Well, let's move through your life by starting with a success quote or a mantra, some kind of saying that has meaning for you. I like to say it's a nice way to get the inspirational tires smoking here on Cars. Yeah. So Michael, grab the wheel. Yeah. So I'd say I had an old boss. I used to work uh, at Twitter in San Francisco. He always said, best way to have a successful career is just work hard and be nice. <laughs> Pretty simple. It always stuck with me because it's so simple. But, you know, as I've worked at different companies and, you know, had different interactions with people all across the board, it really comes down to that. You know, if you want to have success yeah. in whatever you're doing, it's got to be a ton of hard work. And as long as you're nice to people and then things things should turn out all right. Well, you know, you sure hope so. And I'm quite a bit older than you, so I've been around a while, had to deal with a lot of people. And it always amazes me sometimes you look at people that aren't so nice and they seem to have a pretty successful career, but but they just aren't very nice people to be around. And you kind of scratch your head and say, how do they get here? I think for me, I would much rather be thought of as a kind and helpful person than kind of a, the opposite, if you will. Yeah. Um, and maybe in some way, uh, they kind of end up not to being as happy as the rest of us. But it's a pretty simple thing. It's the old golden rule. I think I learned that back when I was a kid in church and Bible class, you know, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. It's a, a basic rule in life. But the other piece of it is really important, of course, and that is working hard. So many people look at successful people and think, oh, they've just always been successful. And they don't see the the background. Now, you've worked in a lot of different fields. I mean, commercial real estate, tech startups, tech and so forth. Uh, you got to work hard to be successful, right? Yeah, I think especially in the tech world, people see tech startup founders becoming millionaires overnight at at a really early age. And so I think people tend to say, well, uh, well it seems pretty easy. Why can't I just have a brilliant idea <laughs> and just, yeah. you know, retire at 30? But the reality is it mostly takes many, many years of hard work and inching your way up a lot of failures along the way before, you know, you might have a crack at, at success. So, well, and there's a lot of people that don't become successful financially, uh, in tech compared to the very few that do. And, uh, I think it was Willie Nelson said, yeah, I was an overnight success. It only took 20 years of playing in honky tonks <laughs> overnight exactly. to become that success. So yeah, people don't see all the hard work. You look at somebody like Elon Musk today, Go back and study him or even Steve Jobs. Go back and study them and see what it took to get to where they got. And those are a bit of outliers, I understand, but those are also pretty unique individuals. Let's talk about this new venture of yours. I would love for you to share a lot more about the Motoring Club, what it is, why people should be interested in it, um, and what has you excited and fired up about the Motoring Club in 2020. Yeah, so at a high level, it's a, a social club for car enthusiasts. Basically, the idea came from just years of being a car enthusiast and wherever I lived, going to local cars and coffees, meeting uh, and joining local car groups, um, and always kind of dreaming that someone would create a permanent clubhouse for car enthusiasts in whatever city uh -huh. I was living in. So at a high level, the idea was could I make a permanent cars and coffee? And when I researched it more and more, I realized that no one had really been had done it in the way that I had envisioned it. I was living in New York City at the time, and I'd been to Classic Car Club Manhattan a number of times. Um, and I had read about and followed some other kind of high-end car clubs that existed, private racetracks, things like Thermal, and drew a lot of inspiration from them, but realized that 
no one had created a club for kind of the, the more general population of enthusiasts and not just the top kind of bracket of collectors. So the idea was, could we take over a, a large space and create kind of a multifunction car space? So car storage on one side, a member lounge and kind of hang out and event space on the other with a little coffee shop and a bar and basically build a physical community from this space based on just a, a general interest in, in cars. So I wanted to build kind of an inclusive and approachable community space that was rooted in, you know, the first clubhouse, uh, which is, is L.A. Moved from New York to L.A. because I figured, you know, if this idea was going to have any shot um, at becoming something, I may as well move to, to L.A. where there's so much of a, a car scene uh, 365 days a year. I came out here and basically my first year in developing the idea, I just pounded the pavement. I went to every Cars and Coffee I could, met as many people as I could, got feedback, got inspiration, and uh, was lucky enough to raise some capital, find my location in Marina Del Rey, basically open up the doors. It was a bit of a, a hope of if I build it, they will come. <laughs> and and uh, yeah, so I'm basically uh, about nine and a half months since since opening. Very cool. So what are some of the things that people who are able to join this? Obviously, I live far away from you, about 1,400 miles. Um, is there a possibility for me to join you? And if so, what are the benefits for me since I'm not in the area? Or is the whole concept here more for maybe scaling and expanding to having these facilities in different cities? Yeah. So right now, so when we actually, when I launched um, I started as an online kind of benefits platform before kind of adding the clubhouse as a kind of a new tier of, of membership. And that's a piece that I hope to kind of relaunch and expand upon. And the online aspect of the business was basically an idea of making almost a more enthusiast inspired AAA, if, if you will, kind of an online discount and benefits platform. So members that are local, they can join a tier to utilize the clubhouse, come to all the events. But we also partner with a lot of local automotive businesses to give discounts to members. So for the online membership tier, we're going to hope to attract members from all over the country who might not live in LA, but want to kind of be a part of the community and get discounts from our partners. Um, so we've, we're starting to get a larger roster of national uh, like e-commerce partners, brands like Yakima for roof racks and tirebuyer.com for tires. And then we're going to kind of dip our toes in, in the content world as well. So we're hoping to kind of build our brand beyond the, the walls of our clubhouse to make it interesting for people from all over the country to kind of be a part of the club, get our benefits. And then as we grow our footprint of clubhouses, provide a space for these members to come visit um, whenever they're in a city close by. So, you know, for yourself, you know, if you were an online member and you're visiting LA a handful of times a year, um, you'd get kind of day passes to the clubhouse here and you can kind of follow along, see if there's an event when you're in town. And we'll also building out a fleet of cars. So we'll be able to rent those out to members who are in town as well. Oh, cool. All right. So would they be more more like classic cars or vintage cars or unique cars? Yeah. So we're going to kind of have a, a bit of a mix. Our first car we got was actually a new Alfa Romeo 4C, which we've been enjoying. And then second car was actually a Ford Fairlane. So we went kind of opposite direction. <laughs> Yeah, so, there's, there's a wide variety for you. And now we're hunting two new cars, a BMW 2002 and probably a, a Porsche uh, 32 Carrera. So, yeah, we're just trying to kind of build up a kind of quirky enthusiast fleet. And that's that, you know, hopefully is our model that we can kind of take to other cities and kind of grow the footprint. Sounds cool. Let's take a look at some of the challenges or maybe a specific challenge or even a failure that you faced along the way 
I like to ask this question more so to see what the lesson learned was, how you came out in a positive way. So take us down a path. Tell us how that experience helped you gain even more momentum in your life and your career and your business as you move through it. Yeah. So I guess, you know, sticking with the the motoring club theme, you know, the biggest challenge was definitely getting this up and running and and signing the lease, getting investors on board to give me a shot at kind of opening the doors. I didn't have the capital myself to open this business. Uh, I think is naturally a challenge, especially in the car space. A lot of people assume, oh, you know, if you're starting one of these businesses, you're probably already some collector with a ton of money and you can just buy a warehouse, put your cars in there and invite some friends to come along. But for me, I was starting this with no capital myself, just kind of the idea. So biggest challenge was kind of convincing anyone to to write me a check to believe in me and believe in the model when really, you know, my business plan, my in, investment pitch was really, like I said before, a if if I build it, they will hopefully come <laughs> plan, which is not the best uh, business model because there weren't really any other businesses or competitors out there that were really doing the same thing. So, you know, the challenge for me to overcome was I spent a year kind of dipping into savings, just kind of hustling, getting a hundred no's before, you know, anyone said yes. So I I was told by a lot of friends that started companies that you got to set some dates. And if you don't make certain milestones by those dates, you have to give up, go back to tech or whatever you're doing. And you gave it a try. And I think I blew through like three of those dates. (laughs) It went against, you know, everyone's recommendations. Some people, you know, good advice I'd gotten that I kind of didn't follow was fail fast. You know, if you're going to fail, just go for it, but don't drag it on. And I kept getting no's and kept running into issues, uh, but I just kind of couldn't couldn't let it go. Kind of persistence paid off in the end and was able to kind of pull everything together. So it went from really dragging on and then all of a sudden the property I found and the investments kind of it all came together within a matter of weeks and all of a sudden I was standing in a empty 11,000 square foot warehouse with a <laughs> a key in my hand and <laughs> yeah a lease in the other hand and how did I get here yeah so. and it's like now I got to prove this yeah absolutely well uh, your tenacity is commendable uh, yeah, that's what it takes sometimes. You just got to believe in in what you're doing and just keep going, keep going, keep going. Don't give up and keep trying. So kudos to you for doing that. Let's take a short break. Thank our sponsors real quickly and we'll be right back. My favorite collector car magazine is Keith Martin's Sports Car Market. I've been a subscriber for decades. Sports Car Market is the Wall Street Journal for the enthusiast and the collector. It's your monthly must read whether you dream of owning a collector car have two cars or 200. Sports Car Market has been around for 31 years and it's filled with valuable articles, intelligent write-ups, and the latest auction sales. Go to sportscarmarket.com and subscribe today. Plus, you'll get the exclusive SEM guide to restoration shops included for free. At checkout, use the code CARSYA and receive a 50% discount on your digital subscription. It's an exclusive offer from me here at Cars Yeah. I'm Mark Green, and I love Sports Car Market Magazine. Are you looking for a way to get your products or services into the ears of thousands of automotive enthusiasts around the globe? I can help. This is Mark Green here at Cars Yeah, and I'd be honored to be an influencer and ambassador for your brand in a unique and personal way. Five days a week, thousands of subscribers and listeners enjoy the Cars Yeah podcast and website. Contact me today, and I'll show you how at mark at carsyeah.com or connect with me through the Cars yeah website at carsyeah.com. If you're listening to Cars yeah, you've probably spent some time working on your favorite ride. But how confident are you working on your finances? You may be able to rebuild a fuel injection system, but can you decipher the details of a mutual fund? If you're like me, investments, insurance, annuities, budgeting, and other financial concepts may seem a bit daunting, but what if I told you there's a book that describes these subjects and more in an easy-to-read and a very humorous way? My friend Chris Kimball, CFP, a longtime sponsor and past guest here on Cars yeah, 
has written that book, and it's titled The Saga of Ike and Penny, a couple's humorous journey through the confusing world of finance. It's a fun look at things you need to know. Everything from investing to effective ways to get rid of credit card debt, and it's probably the only book on finance with a VMAX on the front cover and a classic Mini Cooper on the back. The book's available at Amazon for just $10, and this book will dramatically improve the direction of your financial future. I gave copies to each of my children. All securities are through Money Concepts Capital Corp. Christopher Kimball Financial Services is not affiliated with Money Concepts Capital Corp. Get your copy, The Saga of Ike and Penny, today. All right, we're back, and I would love for you to share a story with us that instigated your personal passion for cars. Is is there a pivotal moment in your life when you knew you're going to be a car guy? Because you said you were kind of a car guy, but not a diehard crazy car guy. But is there a point you went, this is the path I want to take? Yeah, I think um, for me, I grew up in New York City, so it's not typically the breeding ground of a typical car enthusiast. So I didn't grow up with a garage <laughs> and, you know, a family that was, you know, wrenching in the garage. So, you know, I wish that I had kind of grown up with mechanical skills. Now at a later age, I'm trying to learn from all the other enthusiasts around me now. But to me, growing up in New York, it was more about the beauty of classic cars than mechanically. Um, my family was big into cars, both my mom and my dad came from families who were into cars. So luckily at, at an early age, I had they had kind of taken me around cars and I would go up with them uh, to Lime Rock Racetrack in Connecticut to go to, to races. So lucky enough to be a city kid, but have, have parents that uh, uh, were interested in them and took me enough around them. I still have city friends that are almost 40 years old without driver's license. <laughs> so, oh, my, yeah. the horror, yeah. the horror. Yep. <laughs> so I'm lucky that uh, I was able to escape the city and, and uh, get in some cars at, a, at an early age. But a lot of my passion around cars through my early years, through high school, through college, wasn't necessarily in driving them. It was just kind of lusting after them and researching them. So I'm not... I guess one of those enthusiasts who's driven every car in the book. I think I have some decent knowledge, but uh, to me, I kind of uh, trying to trying to prove too that you know anyone. It's not too late to be a car enthusiast, and being a car enthusiast is not necessarily about knowing everything about every car. That's kind of part of the mantra for the club. We want it to be you know kind of a safe, accessible space where people can. Uh, can come in and, and become a car enthusiast, not necessarily have to prove that they've been wrenching since they were five. Sure. What was your first really special vehicle? Uh, so for me, it was in college and just beyond, I had a Land Rover Discovery. To me, I grew up obsessing over Land Rover Defenders. So to own a Discovery was was super exciting. And that got me into the off-road world. So I've never been able to really keep any car or truck I've ever owned stock. (laughs) So the Discovery was the first that I was really able to modify and get into the the off-road world. So Mm -hmm. I'd say... What year was it? uh, It was a 2002, a Disco 2. And then later I moved with it uh, out to Colorado. Um, And that's where I really put it to use, would do trips to Moab. And really kind of built it up. So that was, I guess I was a, a truck guy before really getting into cars. Yeah, exactly. Some of those are pretty cool. Uh, you get in the, was it the Series 2? That uh, uh, I've seen them where they've been beefed up for off-road, you know, put big tires on them, jack them up and uh, raise them up. And uh, yeah, they, they, they look kind of like the old Defenders a little bit Yeah, uh, in that case. So I think they're cool. Well, here's a little bit of an introspective question for you, Michael. If you woke up tomorrow and you were a vehicle, what would you be and why? <laughs> I guess, uh, you know, keeping on the track of Land Rovers, I my latest buy was a, a 1995 Range Rover Classic. Again, because mm-hmm. I just love those classic Rovers. Um, and I'm currently LS swapping it. So I guess my 
choice for that would be my LS Swap Range Rover, because I guess in life I've been a bit of someone that you know has a, a bunch of interests, so kind of a, a well-rounded <laughs> individual, <laughs> so to speak. My build with this LS Swap Range Rover is kind of, I guess, uh, you could draw parallels to my life of trying to find a lot of adventures and be uh, be a bit well-rounded in whatever I do. There you go. Well, we are entering the last lap, as I call it. I'm going to fire off a series of questions and ask you to give us some very quick blips of that uh, modified uh, land rover with the LS swap, which is kind of cool. So here we go. Would you share one of your personal habits you believe has contributed to your successes over the years? Yeah, I think uh, to me, it's it's getting outside, getting kind of being physically active in the outdoors. To me, um, just kind of getting out in nature, getting some perspective, you know, whether that's off-roading or biking or skiing. To me, I've always had to have a, a bit of balance and getting out, getting some sun, seeing some of the country has always always been rewarding and allowed me to kind of focus on, on work or whatever else I'm, I'm doing in life. Sure. If I could arrange for you to have a drink or a meal with anyone in the automotive industry, living or deceased, who would it be? Hmm. I'd go with uh, Steve McQueen on this one, if if you can consider him to be in the automotive arena. Oh, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, just the king of cool, you know, would if it's if it's a drink, you know, I'd want to I'd want to pick his brain and hear his stories. Yeah, for sure. I've had his son, Chad, as guest here on Cars Yeah twice now. Oh, cool. And attended uh, last year the Steve McQueen Car Show, which is out at the Boys Ranch uh, east of Los Angeles. Uh, interesting story with Steve McQueen. He was sent there as a kid. He was pretty much a juvenile delinquent. Uh, he had a horrible father and a mom who was a drug addict or alcoholic. And he ran away from home and was out in L.A. and getting into trouble. And the judge said he could go to jail or he could go to this uh, the Boys Republic. And he said, what's the Boys Republic? He said, well, it's kind of like a camp. He goes, well, camp sounds better than jail. <laughs> um, but uh, it's a place where wayward kids went and they tried to help them out. And it still exists today. It's a wonderful place. They have a big car show that Chad puts on out there along with a lot of volunteers. A uh, great car show where they raised oh, well, over a million dollars last year to help the school. It helps boys and girls now who have challenges. Maybe they're into drugs or gangs or try to help them get on the straight and narrow. So uh, Boys Republic is a great thing. But uh, yeah, Steve McQueen, boy, I always thought, you know, when I talked to Chad, man, what it must have been like to have a dad that was Steve McQueen. That's a big shadow to live in, but pretty darn cool. Now, um, how about the best automotive advice that someone else has ever given you? What would that be? I don't know if anyone's like necessarily given it to me explicitly, but I, I do like Magnus Walker's phrase. He always tells people to just get out and drive. Because to me, you know, you can sit in parking lots and garages and talk about cars all you want. But it's at the end of the day, just getting out, finding some roads and enjoying whatever you're driving. Yeah, for sure. Another one of his sayings, which kind of makes me cringe because I'm kind of a clean car guy, is dirt don't slow you down, which is a fun one. He's been a guest here twice on Cars, yeah. So uh, my wife calls him uh, my brother from another mother because we couldn't be two quite polar opposites in appearance and everything else. But we both love Porsches. We both love driving Porsches. So yeah, he's uh, made quite a name for himself. How about a resource? Is there one out there that you'd like to share with our listeners that you found uh, to be real useful? Well, I mean, I, I'm assuming everyone knows about Bring a Trailer by, by now. Yeah, uh, I would think so. Yeah. But I, uh, I, I spent a lot of time using uh, Search Tempest, which is like a Craigslist aggregator. I feel like the cars that I'm usually searching are more of the, uh, the Craigslist variety these days, the, the project cars. So I've got bunch of nationwide searches going on of all sorts of stuff that I'm looking at. Interesting. Very cool. Well, I'm going to add one other great resource, the Motoring Club. Make sure I put a link to that as well. Uh, how about a book? Is there a book you've read you think our listeners should read? Yeah, I actually just met the author um, who came into the club the other day, Ryan Zumalin, called Slow Car Fast. Self-published, uh, just came out. I'm technically a, a millennial. I'm 36. I think I'm the last year of <laughs> the last of the holdouts. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I, I always find it interesting 
reading articles or books about, you know, where car culture is going and what the kids these days are going to be interested in. So uh, yeah, it's an interesting read about where things are going, you know, what millennials or, you know, the, the future generations, how the torch is going to be passed or not. Um, Cause that's, you know, exactly what we're kind of trying to preserve with the club. Yeah. I think his uh, book, Slow Car Fast, the millennial uh, mantra changing car culture for good uh, is, is kind of subtitle there for that book. So uh, yeah, that's uh, an interesting book for sure. And Definitely, when you look at what's happening right now in car culture and in cars in general, I think we're going through a major, major shift. Uh, not like anything I've ever seen before, for sure, uh, in the car world. And uh, I've actually sent Ryan a request to be a guest here on the show. We'll see if he uh, responds or not. But um, yeah, if you see him again, say, hey, Mark's looking for you. <laughs> um, so he can uh, reach out. And we can talk about his book because I've had a lot of authors on the show. But yeah, with electric cars coming on fast and, of course, autonomous cars and also this very big changing dynamic of uh, more and more cars being leased. So there's less and less cars being owned by people, which means they don't really care about them that much in that sector. When I go into the car dealerships these days, I always ask, how many cars do you lease versus sell? And they're, you know, in the mid 60s to 70 percent. And also, there's not as many millennials as there are of my generation of baby boomers. There was a massive number of baby boomers and we're all getting old and dying out. Terrible thing to say, but it's true. Um, I'm kind of on the tail end of that. So uh, yeah, where is this going to go? And I think it's kind of cool too, because you're seeing a changing pattern in bring a trailer, cars that are popular, cars from the 80s and 90s are becoming to be more popular and the older cars are less popular just because, you know, we all like cars that we liked when we were in high school. Uh, in you know college, and we couldn't afford the things we really wanted. And now millennials are they have jobs and they're doing well and they're making money, and so they can actually buy those cool cars that they wish they had. And I know that those are the cars that I always went after, cars I wish I could have in those days. So I think you're absolutely right. I'll make sure I put all these uh, these resources that Michael has shared with us today on his very own Cars Yeah show notes page. Just go to CarsYeah.com, type in Michael Rapetti. R-A-P-E-T-T-I, and you'll find everything there. All right, Michael, we're up to the checkered flag, and today I'm going to buy you a very cool car, kind of a collector car to park in your garage, something fun. Uh, but there's a few rules since I'm writing the check. You have to keep it. You can't sell it to fund your business, and it's the only cool collector car that you can have that might make it a little bit more of a challenge. So what can I buy you today? Hmm. If you could write uh, about a $2 million check. <laughs> I, no problem. No yeah, problem. I think so. Despite all my talk about loving Land Rovers, I think if I had an unlimited check, I, I'd probably skip those. Other than Land Rovers, uh, I, I am a big Porsche guy as well. And to me, a 993 GT2 would be kind of my holy grail, the kind of last of the air cooled. Super rare, uh, right. some fender flares. So to me, that would be kind of you know I would I would still drive it, but to have something that rare, um, that fun, to me would be would be the one I would have. It would be kind of fun, yeah, for sure. Nine nine three. I had a four S for a while as a daily driver. I, six or seven years, it was a great car to drive uh, every day. Love the nine nine threes, but of course the GT two. There's a whole nother character level to that. So uh, that makes it pretty cool. They didn't make a lot of those either. So pretty rare. Do you have a color choice just so I get the right car for you? Yeah, I think um, what was the um, I'm blanking on it. I think it was a there was a one last year at Scottsdale that sold. I think it was Voodoo Blue. Oh, Voodoo. Yeah. OK. Yeah. And it was just there's something about that that was I think there was like a yeah, I think it was Voodoo Blue. I'll go Voodoo Blue. <laughs> You'll go. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, yeah, that sounds like a nice place to go. Uh, yeah, that's a cool color and uh, kind of a rare color as well. One of those paint to sample cars, if you will. Um, now, you said one sold, was it this year or last year at, at uh, Barry Jackson? I think it was last year at, it might have been Gooding in Scottsdale. Oh, Gooding? I think it was. Oh, in Scott, okay. It was like just under $2 million maybe. Okay. Well, I could think I might be able to handle that for you. So, uh <laughs> 
Yeah, that car. There was uh, there was one that sold at Gooding. I'm trying to remember. I remember when. I think it was um, it was a '96, and but it was yellow, um, a speed yellow cars, about a million and a half, one point four, something like that. Uh, you start adding all the taxes and things, you're easily over one point five million. But um, yeah, and that car was uh, very much equipped like a race car, of course, with the GT2 flares and spoiler and all that fun stuff so yeah that would be pretty sweet i think that would be pretty pretty darn cool nice choice uh yeah okay i'll get my big checkbook out the big golfers checkbooks like they win at the golfing tournaments to write all the zeros there michael you taking me on a fun ride today i knew this would be a blast i want to thank you for sharing your journey before you drive off into the uh sunset there down on the coast highway Ah, I remember those days in that beautiful 993 GT2 in voodoo blue to match the ocean. Is there any little parting piece of wisdom or guidance you might share with us? I'd say just uh, like Magna says, get out and drive. (laughs) Yeah, go have some fun. And again, what's the best way for people to follow along and learn a lot more about the motoring club? I'm super active on Instagram. So I'm, I'm the one managing the account as well. So Feel free to follow, shoot me a DM. Uh, it's just at the Motoring Club. Or if you want to get online, sign up or just read more about us, uh, website is themotoring.club. There you go. I'll make sure I put links to those on Michael's show notes page. Check it out. I follow them. It's a lot of fun and you should too. Again, you can find everything on the Cars yeah website under Michael Arapetti. Mike, and if you're in the... Los Angeles area, give them a call, look them up, uh, go check it out. I think you'll have some fun. Michael, thanks for being so generous today with your time and your expertise for sharing your worldly car experiences with us today. Until you and I talk again, I'll see you down the road. Great. Thanks a lot. Hey, Cars Yeah listeners, this is Mark Green. If you love the Cars Yeah podcast, I have something new for you. I've teamed up with Keith Martin, a collector car market expert and the editor of Sports Car Market Magazine to create the Buy, Sell, Hold podcast. Buy, Sell, Hold is the essence of collecting. Together, we take you on an educational ride into the collector car market, talking with industry experts, helping you navigate your collector car journey so you know when to buy, sell, hold. We talk with seasoned experts, who buy, sell, and hold investment vehicles, and they'll share their insider secrets on how they make their buying decisions when it comes to making these important investments. You'll find the Buy, Sell, Hold podcast on the Cars Yow website, on the Sports Car Market website, and if you're a podcast app subscriber to Cars Yow, Buy, Sell, Hold will come right to your mobile device, just like the Cars Yow podcast, automatically. Join Keith Martin and me on a great new venture on the Buy, Sell, Hold podcast today. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah.